Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Pre-swell pump, post-swell dump, or rather we're in the middle of swell right now, but XRP price is moving lower. Uh, guys, I have the XRP chart right here, and this was the pump we saw before swell 2018. Now let's not forget, this was a pre-swell pump. This wasn't a pump that was occurring during swell. Swell actually took place on this day here was the opening day for swell. Let me just circle that for you guys so you guys can see that. This was the opening day for Swell, and then what did we see after that? A downward trajectory where price went from about uh, 58 cents all the way down to 38 cents back then uh, over the next couple of days, next week or so. So just to put things into perspective, Swell 2018 started October 1st. Uh, these were the days uh, leading up to Swell in September. And then we saw some movement downward. Now, some people are suggesting, well, you know, it's the same kind of thing, same kind of crap. XRP right now trading at about 24 and a half cents. We saw the days leading up to swell here. And then, uh, of course, we saw a bit of a downturn for XRP. But guys, this is happening in the rest of the crypto space. So this is Bitcoin here on the daily. We can see the same kind of turnaround for Bitcoin. Other cryptocurrencies are doing the same thing, like XLM. Uh, as a similar cryptocurrency. So over the last three days, we have seen some downward momentum for many of the cryptocurrencies in the space. Let me look up Ethereum, same kind of pattern here. So I don't actually think XRP has been affected by swell this year. I think this is just uh, par for the course with regards to the crypto market as a whole. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of things going on with regards to Swell. Uh, this is a tweet from Brad Garlinghouse, our fourth annual Ripple Swell 2020 has officially commenced from Toronto to San Francisco, Singapore to virtual. We have a fantastic lineup of speakers, panels, demos, and some fun surprises over the next two days. Uh, now, uh, I saw this from Martin Volk. This is just kind of a recap. Crypto Eddie actually did a really good recap on uh, Swell Day 1 as well, if you guys want to check out her channel. I'm just going to go over it real fast though for you guys just to give you guys the salient point so as we know the pandemic has affected swell this year and so ripple swell conference was held in camera however some news and interesting comments have been leaked in addition ripple itself has shared some things on twitter with regards to the opening address in his opening keynote yesterday, Brad Garlinghouse said that the financial industry has not seen innovations like this in decades. Digital banks and PSPs, payment service providers, are putting pressure on the existing system while digital wallets continue their meteoric rise. Ripple is right in the middle of this with its vision of the Internet of Value, as Garlinghouse emphasized. And so Crypto Eddie mentions that Brad Garlinghouse is said to have mentioned that XRP is the key behind RippleNet. This has been the narrative from the beginning. We need XRP. It is a valuable digital asset in order to lube the mechanism. Think of it as the oil behind the machine. Okay, so XRP is the key behind RippleNet and that Ripple is now doubling down its efforts with 500 employees as we know they have been on a hiring spree as of late. A particularly interesting point of the first day was also Ripple's new product uh, or rather a new service, their line of credit for which some new details became public. So we've got the line of credit. The product is being managed by Barry Joseph and replaces a pre-financing process that previously took two to three months. Line of credit streamlines the entire process in 24 to 48 hours. Guys, efficiency is going to be the name of the game for this line of credit. And I saw this from Straight Up XRP on Twitter. Gotta give him credit for this. Posted this video, I do not know who this guy is, but he's describing line of credit and why it gives Ripple such an advantage. I didn't think of it from this perspective, but guys, listen to what he has to say because I think he's onto something. A line of credit by Ripple is going to be huge in my opinion. Ripple got the competitive edge to traditional uh, credit providers, uh, lenders of last resort, however you want to call them. Um, do not underestimate this shit. So basically, Ripple is giving out credits. They're charging four to 12% interest rate and the credit can be approved in no time like this traditionally when companies were asking for credits it took like one or two months to get it approved and they charged an interest rate of 10 to 20% which is twice as much as what Ripple charges so um, obviously companies will go to Ripple it's faster and cheaper to get a credit Ripple is going to take the XRP, give it out in masses. What do you think is going to happen if Ripple's XRP is running low? They're going to go to the open market and buy XRP in masses. What's going to happen then? You know, man, you know. <laughs> I love the ending of that video. You know, man, you know what's going to happen next. 
Okay, so this is going to create a huge demand for XRP. Boy, it's getting me excited just thinking about it. Uh, and once Ripple has gone through their initial reserves of XRP, they are going to go to the open market. This only makes sense, especially when you're thinking of the magnitude, the amount of XRP that is going to be needed to fulfill product demand. Now, what else does this guy say? He mentions uh, the fact that Ripple is only charging 4 to 12 percent compared to the traditional lenders that charge upward of 20 percent. And this also uh, streamlines the entire process in 24 to 48 hours with RippleNet members purchasing XRP at a predetermined price. The annual percentage rate. All right. So we went over that depending on the length of the agreement. So this essentially gives Ripple the upper hand uh, to deliver XRP, pump it out into the ecosystem, give those smaller to medium sized businesses access to XRP at a rate that we have never seen before in the lending game. And so you think about all the different partnerships that I've talked about on this channel over the years, all the different banks, all those different news articles where some of you are thinking, yeah, yeah, whatever, it's another partnership. Who cares it's not moving price today? Guys, this is all culminating. Okay, so I wanted to thank Straight Up XRP for posting that. There was also an on-demand liquidity panel at uh, Swell with three partners, Flash FX from Australia, Bitso from Mexico, and a new face, the SIG Group CEO, Guillermo de la Vina. Uh, SIG is a financial company that offers a range of products and services, including personal money transfers and mobile money transfers. De la Vina explained that SIG was able to launch a new ODL corridor within six months. So this is the thing with ODL and part of the beauty of it, it is easily to implement. So these companies can uh, open up their corridor, get everything up and running relatively quickly uh, compared to the infrastructure that we were dependent on in the past. So an unconfirmed rumor, there's another note here, uh, which however also confirms earlier leaks is a possible partnership between Bank of America and Ripple. All right, this rumor has been floating around the XRP community for a while now. I think it has been confirmed, uh, although the XRP community is divided on the issue. Here are some screenshots, sure enough. Uh, this is a tweet uh, from XRP Deutschland in here uh, with that RippleNet demo and the Bank of America. Let me just click on that real quick. Can I find it here? Right here. So we've got the uh, Bank of America mobile app and selects how much money to send. I think that this rumor has already been uh, confirmed, so it shouldn't be a rumor anymore. We've also got Marcus Tratcher, Senior Vice President of Consumer Success for the company. And what does he have to say? Well, uh, Ian Northing tweeted this out. An article with regards to Marcus Tratcher naming Ripple's client SABB and TB Bank as the winners of the CX Impact Award. So Senior Vice President of Customer Success at Ripple, Marcus Marcus Tretcher named the companies who won the CX Impact Award this year, and they were the Saudi Arabia-based SABB, Saudi British Bank, and TP Bank. Uh, the latter is a Ripple customer and a major bank in Vietnam, and uh, it is eager for innovation. The bank has been using RippleNet since 2019 to send remittances between Vietnam and the rest of the world at a high speed and cheap rates thanks to Ripple's technology. Both are Ripple clients and have been successfully using RippleNet. SABB is the third largest bank in Saudi Arabia, and it has a reputation for performing fast cross-border payments at a low cost. Well, I don't think they could do it without RippleNet. Marcus Tretcher stated that the better customer experience these banks has created has led to an increase in their market share. No kidding. Why am I not surprised the CX Impact Award is given to companies or individuals that significantly improve their customer's experience and make a significant impact on their customers? I believe this award will be given out to Ripple clients year after year after year after year because how could they not essentially improve customer experience if it's cheaper, it's faster, it's more secure, basically all around better, how could it not improve customer experience? So there we have it guys, uh, a bit of a sum up from Swell Day One. We've also got this guys from Bank XRP. There was a, a, a new announcement, a new Ripple partner, Cambridge Global Payment and Ripple Partnership goes live. So this is big because Cambridge is huge. They're a fleet core company and a provider of integrated cross-border payments and currency risk management solutions. They announced today the commercial launch of its partnership with Ripple, the enterprise blockchain solution for certain global payments to deliver cross-border payment solutions to B2B customers. Uh, the partnership between Ripple and Cambridge will optimize payment delivery using RippleNet, Ripple Global Payments Network. During the pilot phase of this partnership, deposits to vendors who used preferred banking partner uh, Siam Commercial Bank saw a 90 99% reduction in time to pay out with RippleNet compared to other providers, a significant drop from the current average of two days. 
So the average was two days. Now they're seeing a 99% reduction in time to pay out with RippleNet, guys. That's instant settlement right there. Cambridge also reported experiencing a higher level of transparency and certainty throughout the payment process. Cambridge is exploring additional countries and currencies that can benefit from access to RippleNet. And here's a quote, guys, from Mark Frey, president of Cambridge Global Payments. We entered into the relationship with Ripple because it presented Cambridge a great opportunity to use distributed ledger technology to reduce the amount of time it takes for customers to pay their overseas vendors. By expanding this relationship, we broaden our research into the Asia Pacific region while providing customers the rapid payment delivery they expect. So this is a huge partnership uh, also announced uh, just recently during the Swell Conference. Big news, lots of surprises, as Brad Garlinghouse mentioned over here. We've also got this, guys. I saw this from the Cryptic Poet. Oh man, Air partners with Ripple partner bank Dofar to utilize e-commerce payment gateway platform. So here's the link to this article, or rather this, uh, I think I have to sign up to be a member of this, uh, but he does post the link here in the uh, in his tweet. Uh, but just to put things into perspective here, guys, I got roses on the moon here. And if you didn't know already, obviously Bank Dofar live on RippleNet, that was retweeted out by Navin Gupta on February 17th, 2019. So congratulations to Bank Dofar live on RippleNet. Now non-resident Indians living in Oman can app money back home in real time using RippleNet technology. Uh, and here are just a few screen grabs with regards to that. So every partnership counts, guys. Every partnership is really going to create more demand for XRP. And, uh, you know, with this lending thing, as I had mentioned earlier, and uh, what this guy here was explaining is that it is going to get big very fast. Ripple has that competitive edge of charging less interest uh, than the traditional providers, but also that being approved in 24 to 48 hours versus uh, several days in some cases is really going to make XRP very, very accessible to the small and medium-sized businesses and maybe in some cases large businesses that are going to need it right then and there. And when it's not available, when the reserves run dry, they're going to have to go to the open market, guys. And who owns XRP? Who is going to be selling it on the open market? Think about it. Think about how much XRP you have. Think about what the price could be. And think about what that'll mean for us and our future. Another one here, guys, I uh, saw this from Lucky John underscore XRP on Twitter. Uh, Ripple essentially mapping out the future ecosystem for XRP. Uh, this talks a little bit about the rebranding, as we had already know, the Ripple X from the Spring Initiative. Monica Long is now in charge of that. Ripple is currently hiring a software engineer, a director of engineering, a director of development relations, and a technical partner and program manager, all for Ripple X. Uh, so it talks a little bit about those uh, job descriptions. Ultimately, though, I think the main takeaway, you will be joining a fast-moving team focused on driving adoption and growth of the Ripple X platform with the aim of developing a thriving active global community of developers around XRP and the XRPL. In this role, you will function as a crucial link between external technical teams and our internal product development and growth teams. The ideal candidate has the ability to effortlessly toggle between technical and product GTM initiatives and the versatility to move between strategies and operations with ease. So these are multifaceted positions, and so uh, they need somebody that can run the gamut, of course. Make sure they can cover all the bases for this business growth. As Director of Developer Relations, you will develop and lead initiatives to engage, support, enable, and grow the global XRP community of developers around XRPL by being their advocate and communicating their needs to our internal product and engineering teams. We believe technology should be incredibly easy to use with a frictionless product experience that drives clear utility. These guys clearly want to be the Amazon of digital assets. Guys, I'll leave this article in the description if you want to read further. Thanks so much much lucky john underscore xrp for posting that and even though swell is going on right now this is also happening today ripple is proud to announce a 10 million dollar contribution to mercy course to expand financial inclusion and increase economic empowerment globally they just don't stop do they this is from michael at val 5 links so they donated they just contributed 10 million dollars among ngos mercy Corps is a proven leader in creating economic opportunities for vulnerable populations through the application of new and innovative technology last year alone own, their programs helped nearly 28 million people and its uh, impact investing arm invests in and partners with innovative social entrepreneurs to scale solutions to the world's most persistent challenges, including financial inclusion. So in this partnership, Ripple and Ripple Works, a nonprofit co-founded by Chris Larson that supports social ventures across multiple sectors. They'll support solutions that leverage digital financial technologies such as distributed ledgers, uh, digital assets, and cryptocurrencies to bring large numbers of people in emerging 
emerging markets into the global economy over a three-year initiative. Already, Ripple has been working with Mercy Corp Ventures uh, to define pilots and invest in early-stage fintech startups in the global South and Latin America. Ripple's contribution uh, will also be used to support the education of Mercy Corp's fielding staff, working to address the financial challenges based on these regions and apply digital financial solutions. In doing so, they aim to reach 10 million people in the next decade. So Ripple obviously uh, continuing with their charity efforts on top of their business, targeting these communities, the unbanked. Of course, uh, it makes sense since that has been part of Ripple's initiative since the beginning, banking the unbanked. And so if the unbanked has the infrastructure, the RippleNet technology, they can be part and will be part of this growing financial economy. So it doesn't surprise me that Ripple uh, keeps up with these initiatives. Obviously, it isn't completely altruistic. Nevertheless, it is still beneficial. Uh, Going to keep moving along, though. Spark tokens, right? Spark tokens. I saw this from XRP Crypto Wolf. Uh, and now, apparently, cryptocurrency exchange TokensNet will support Flare Network Spark airdrop for XRP hodlers. So this guy's yet another exchange that is supporting uh, the airdrop. I don't know if you guys use tokens now. Put it down in the comments if you do. Uh, but yet another platform that is supporting the Spark airdrop. It was announced uh, yesterday, which was October 14th. According to the official statement released by the platform, all tokens.net users can just deposit XRP tokens to their account and wait for the snapshot. So you don't even have to do anything. The snapshot will take place on December 12th, as we all know, uh, while the exact date of the airdrop will be unveiled by Flare Network soon. And so here is a screen grab of that tweet. Uh, so no further action is needed by the XRP army who uh, uses tokens.net as custody for their riches. All of them are counted as Spark airdrop participants by default. Uh, and you know, I'm surprised more exchanges don't do this. I don't know any that do this particularly. If you guys know of another exchange, put it down in the comments. I'd like to know because I'd like to tell people about it. I'm always quite weary though of leaving my coins on the exchange. I don't trust them because, well, I mean, there's hacks. Cryptocurrency exchanges are getting hacked every single year at an increasing rate. And so I keep my crypto on a ledger. Guys, I did a video recently for those of you who have the ledger and who still haven't set up uh, the ledger to claim your Spark tokens. I did a video on that. I'll put it up here. Uh, I know some of you guys are probably just putting it off to the last minute. No, nah, it's not until December. I can put it off a little while. It's months away, months away. Well, guys, it is coming up quickly, December 12th. It is still technically a couple of months away, but uh, for those of you guys who want to get on it and who have a Ledger Nano S or X, uh, you can claim them straight on your Ledger Nano. You don't have to put them back on an exchange or anything like that. And if you don't have a Ledger, you've been toying around with the idea of getting one. I know that was me almost three years ago now. Should I get a Ledger? Should I not get a Ledger? I mean, I have no complaints. I have two. I have my main one, and just in case something happens, I have a second one as a backup. I do have an affiliate link, guys, if you do want to uh, get a Ledger Nano S or X. And as always, you can use my affiliate link, but you don't have to use it. I don't want to push that on you if you don't want to use it. I uh, want to keep moving along, though, guys. More news here. This from Poochie at Poochie1967 on Twitter. Super Smash Brothers player to receive a salary in XRP. I think he's the first to actually receive his entire salary in XRP. He's a high-profile gamer, and he's joining SBI Holdings Gaming Arm, signing a contract to receive his salary in XRP. This is Ken Suzuki, a professional player of crossover over action fighting game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, or SSBU, uh, and he signed a contract with SBI Esports to be paid in XRP. According to an official announcement posted by SBI on October 15th, Ken will now be part of SBI Esports' newly established SSBU division. The player will receive his annual salary in XRP instead of the Japanese yen based on wishes of the player and the sponsorship. So SBI Esports obviously was launched uh, back a few months ago, uh, June 2020. In late September, the company officially announced that SBI Esports will pay its players in XRP as part of a sponsorship deal. So SBI really upping the ante, uh, really wanting to go all out on promoting XRP as a unit of value. Okay, it is worth something. And, you know, could you imagine if this same industry existed back in 2011, 2010, 2011, and the players wanted to get paid their salaries in Bitcoin? Think of how much money some of these players would have, especially if they kept their holdings uh, locked away for several years. Well, now this is happening with SBI Esports, uh, a subsidiary of SBI Holdings. And to my knowledge, this is the first time somebody has been paid fully 
uh, their, their entire salary fully with XRP. So I wanted to bring that up. Thanks so much to Pucci1967. And guys, did you hear about this new VeChain announcement? Justin, VeChain Toolchain powers Ubique tag to onboard China's top spirits. This coming from the cryptic poet. With the change of lifestyle and fast-growing middle class, Chinese customers are demanding more choices for high-quality alcohols, a growing need for digitization and better optimization in the supply chain, such as traceability and authentication, has prompted companies to adopt better technologies to serve their clients. And guess who stepped up, guys? VeChain. Ubique Tag, a pioneering professional supplier of smart tags in China, has integrated their traceability services with VeChain Toolchain to trace premium liquor and spirit products for their clients. So traceability. Uh, very, very important with regards to the supply chain in China. Uh, obviously, large demand for this in China, considering their uh, history with counterfeited products. Uh, so, you know, the, the Chinese economy, I believe the number was something like it, it was an insane amount of uh, revenue generated in the Chinese economy had to do with either pirated uh, copyrighted materials or counterfeited uh, tangible products. I forget what those numbers are, but they were astounding. The amount of counterfeited products that run through China is, is just, the numbers were mind boggling. And so, you know, VeChain is going to be able to combat this uh, with their traceability protocols. A huge demand for it in China. Now they're doing it with alcohol because I can only imagine what kind of shady, illegitimate alcohol is in the Chinese market as well. So VeChain combating that. I wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. And so what's the true market value of XRP? Well, according to Stephen Bull Dieppe here, CoinShares, an institutional investor, has now assessed the current value of XRP at about 10.14 euros, which is roughly $12 US. XRP is the most undervalued digital asset in my opinion. And so he links this XRP tracker uh, link here. And I went to the tracker. It was really interesting to see this. Uh, you have to put in all your information, guys. I'll share this link in the description if you want to go to it. Uh, and it gives you guys uh, some information here. XRP, obviously, it gives a description. Uh, in 2019, XRP tracker euro became the first XRP XRP based security available on a regulated exchange in the EU when it listed on NGM in Stockholm. Uh, the certificates provide exposure to the performance of the digital currency XRP by synthetically tracking performance of the price of XRP less a fee. So there is an actual formula that goes along with this. The XRP USD market is the most liquid XRP market widely available for trading. We regard it as the most suitable underlying index to track in a XRP product. Uh, the certificates are not equity linked securities traded in the same manner as any other uh, instruments. Uh, XBT Providers Prospectus is approved by the Swedish FSA. To invest, you need an account, which is obtained through your bank, advisor, or online broker. Uh, XRP is purchased for money received through the sale of certificates, which ensures that the certificates are hedged and structured to follow the price of XRP. The certificates are guaranteed by CoinShares, a Jersey Limited company. The certificate is denominated in euros. Thus, here will be a foreign exchange exposure between USD and the euro, which could impact plus or minus the market value and final return from the certificates. Uh, and so here is some key information. Uh, uh, and down here, guys, the chart shows I have it denominated in USD. And as of yesterday, they are stating, I don't know if you guys can see down here in the corner, they are stating that the true market value is about $12.24 per XRP. Now, some people wondering about this, of course, XRP Yoda. Well, I think it should be 100 plus dollars. Uh, and Crypto Granny down here uh, asking what valuation model they use. And sure enough, here's the valuation model. So the fair value calculation. So the current price, 25 cents times the FX rate index price minus the accrued fee since inception, uh, and then the index price less the fee, uh, and then the divisor is 50. So there you have it, guys. It's giving you the true market value of XRP based on those factors. And so some people here like Magnetic Wave are saying that uh, they're pretty sure that they're saying that the fair value is for 50 XRP, uh, that, that you need to look at the divisor again. Although it is interesting because de because in the, on this chart here, it actually does say the true value is $12.24. And as we saw in this uh, screen, grab, we can see that uh, the fair value ends up being, after this entire calculation, 10.09 euros. Anyway, something to take a look at, something uh, to look at in more detail if you guys are interested. Lucas Manel down here actually saying this is the fair value of the shares of the XRP tracker and not of XRP specifically. Well, if you think about it, XRP is the cryptocurrency that is going to hold the value. It's, it's the one that is going to solve the problem. Everything else is just a derivative, is just tracking it or what have you. Brad Garlinghouse has always said, you know, whenever he's asked if he's bullish on XRP, he's always said, 
The cryptocurrencies that are going to solve a problem are the cryptocurrencies that are going to hold value. And so derivatives, products, you know, offshoots of other cryptocurrencies, whatever. A lot of these things are created just to trade for investors. But what cryptocurrency is actually doing something to solve a global problem? Conversely, we've got a lot of people in the XRP community stating that, you know what, $12.24 is actually too low considering what XRP strives to do. So is it too low? Is it too high? I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.